Now six one four seven nine ampersand of this again n minus one that is sixteen minus one also gives out coincidentally the same index. The term also can be stored at index number three itself. It is pointing to this location, but we already have a node over here for Varsha. We will also see how the collision is being resolved in the Java eight onwards. So linked list is not used Java eight onwards. So we'll talk about that also shortly. How does hash map work internally? One of the most favorite questions in an interview. Nowadays, this question is also being modified by asking a lot of follow up questions about collisions, about Java eight improvements in hash map. So straight away they will not ask. They'll ask. Uh, they'll give you a scenario. There's also uh, topics about concurrent hash map. So anyway, so before we dive into all of that, let's start with a very fundamental concept of how hash map works. People who have been doing lead code questions must have come across Java dot util dot hash map, a very popular data structure, which is in which the data is represented in key and value. Suppose I have a map of employees, uh, where I have mapped the employee name and the salary of that employee. So let me just create like this. This is the map. So I have the employee name is Varsha. Salary is 5,000. Then I have Tom. Salary is 6,000. And I have Rina. Salary is 10,000. This is the data structure. Now, how does it work internally it requires a bunch of different concepts. So let's explore that one by one. I also have a PPT slide on all the information written, you know, organized way, but let's try to understand one by one. So first concept that we have to understand is about hashing. What is hashing? It is a way to convert an object into its equivalent integer value. Why do we need this? For faster lookups or faster search. So that you have to understand this is hashing involved. Now, as we know, hash map is part of the Java collection framework and it uses this technique of hashing. Two important data structure which hash map is made up of is array and linked list. Basic data structure. This is how we use these two data structure to create a hash map. So in order to store the key value, it uses internally the array and the linked list so that we have understood. Second concept that we have to understand is about hash code and a little bit about the contract between equals and hash code. So I've not covered about that. So briefly, I'll just mention this about the contract as well now that, now that we're discussing. So if two objects are equal, the hash code has to be equal. So what is hash code? So we use hashing algorithm to generate the hash code. Hash code is nothing but the unique memory address of an object. Okay, so if two objects are equal, the hash code must be equal. So this is the contract. But if two hash codes are equal of two different objects, like two objects have same hash code, it, it is not necessary that both of them will be equal. So this is what the contract is about. Now the question arises, why do we need this hash code? We need this to calculate the bucket in which the entries will be stored. Now comes the concept of buckets. So ideally, uh, like we said, array and linked list is being used, right? So we use the term called buckets. By default, there are 16 buckets, which is implemented internally in hash map. So there are 16 buckets. So you can imagine the index values being ranging from zero to 15. And there's also another term called load factor, which basically tells that at what point the resizing of the hash map will happen. So 0.75 means three fourths. So three fourths of 16 is 12. So when 12 buckets of hash map is already full, at that point in time, it is going to reach this. So these are also some important concepts. So just to revise, we have talked about hashing. We learned about hash code. Why is it needed? To calculate the bucket uh, or to calculate the index. Like you have to add some entry into the hash map. Where should it go? Whether it should go in this bucket or it should go in this bucket. So that is why we will need the hash code also. And apart from that, we understood the concept of bucket and load factor. So this is like the basics. Now let's talk about how we calculate the index and then how does the put method work. So we'll talk about how does the put method work. We'll also talk about collisions and we'll talk about how does the index calculation happens. Like how does the hash code now actually come into play. So we got the hash code, which is the memory uh, address. So let's say we got it some random 21435, some value. Now from this, what we need is the index. Like I have a series of buckets over here, right? And I have to put all those values that I created, that I have employee Varsha, and I have the salary 5,000, I have Tom 6,000, and I have uh, Rina as 10,000. 
So this is the hash code. So what is the formula to calculate the index? This and n minus 1. So n is the size of the hash map. So initially it is by default is 60. So by doing this computation, we calculate the index. So let's say this becomes, so we have the values of 0 to 15. These are the array index values. So let's say after doing this computation, we are getting the value to 3. So index number 3, the, the entry will be put. Which entry? This entry, Varsha and 5000. So now interestingly, we have to also see how does it get stored. So at index number 3, the entry will be stored. But we mentioned something like, we talked about linked list. So how does the node structure look like? It looks something like this. So first, you are going to have the hash code. What is our hash code? That 21435. Then the next entry is going to be the key. What is the key over here? Varsha. So Varsha will be here. The hash code will be stored. Then the value will be stored. What is the value? The salary. So it is 5000. Now this is, this much is fine. It also will store the next pointer because it's a linked list. We know that how it works. There's a chaining. So one node will know where the other node is. That node will know the other node is. So it needs to store the pointer to the next node. So it is going to store next. So initially it will be null because there is only one node. So it will be null initially. So, so far great. So we have tried to put this element inside our hash map based on the index that we have calculated using hash code modulus n minus 1. Okay. Now, why does collision come into the picture? So we discussed about index. We talked about the put method. Now, where does collision fit in? How does collision happen? Suppose when I'm trying to add Tom, for Tom, the hash code calculation that we are doing on the key has come out to be 61479. Okay, this is where the Tom string is being stored. Now, 61479 ampersand of this again, n minus 1, that is 16 minus 1, also gives out coincidentally the same index. The Tom also can be stored at index number 3 itself. It is pointing to this location. But we already have a node over here for Varsha, the employee named Varsha. So now what is happening? Two different keys, Varsha and Tom are two different employees. Two different keys are pointing to the same location. So they are pointing to the same location to store their key value pairs. So what is going to now happen? So here are a couple of things that happens. So this is what we call collision. To resolve this, we use collision resolution strategy. A very common strategy is called separate chaining method. Okay. So collision is similar to something when two different keys are pointing to the same index to be stored at the same index of the hash map. And now because the collision has happened, we have to resolve it. So ideally what happens is if the if something like that happens, first the equals method is called to check if the key one dot equals key two are the keys same. If the keys are same, replace it. So it, it could have been that I have another entry called Varsha. And I'm adding the salary as 7,000. So, Varsha and this two different entries. So, if this was something like this, there would have been a collision. It would have pointed to the same index. Now, because the same key is being used, it's the same employee. The, we know that equals method will content the content, uh, will compare the content. So, it's the same employee. It's just that the salary has been updated from 5,000 to 7,000. So, replace the value. So, over here, this value will be removed and replaced by 7,000. So this is the first thing that is being done. Whenever a collision happens, the first thing that we do is this. We check if the key is equal. If it is equal, we'll replace it. But if the key is not equal, what are we going to do then? Connect previous node to this new node. We'll create a new entry, right? Now when Tom and 6000 is being inserted, it's a completely new entry. So I'll create a similar node like this, where I'll have the hash code, the key value. and the node which was created for Varsha, now it will, will not be null. It will now point to this new node, which will have all the details about Tom, the hash code of Tom, key, value, and everything. So I'll create a chain. So this is Varsha and this is Tom. Both have landed up at index number three. So we resolve the collision using this chaining method because we use linked list. So in this way, at the same bucket or index location, we are able to store two different entries using a linked list. So this is how we have broken or resolved the collision that we faced. Now the next part comes is how does the get method work? So in the previous slide we talked about how does the put method work like how do we add an entry to the hash map. Now if we add an entry we also need to fetch the entry from the hash map. 
as we have talked about the index number three, where two entries were being stored, one for employee Varsha and one for employee name Tom, and both were linked using a linked list. So that much we have covered. Now, if I want to fetch a particular entry, now if I want to fetch a particular entry, how do I do it? The code or the actual way to do it is we say that hash map dot get and then we pass in the key. So in this case, the map which we are using, the employee name is our key and the salary is the value. So if at all I have to fetch an entry from the hash map, I have to give the name of the employee. So in this case, let's say I try to do hash map dot get Tom. So I pass the name of my employee and I want to fetch what is the value or the salary for Tom. This is the ideal use case. Now, how does it happen? So in put method, we have seen how the hash code calculation is done to determine which bucket index it needs to go into. And then if there's a collision, how can we resolve it by using linked list? We will also see how the collision is being resolved in the later use cases. We'll also see how the collision is being resolved in the Java 8 onwards. So linked list is not used Java 8 onwards. So we'll talk about that also shortly. Now coming to this, how does the get method work? So the first step is to calculate the index. Now, if I want to fetch where my entry is, I have to go to that index first, common sense. How were we calculating the index? The hash code we were taking, and then we were doing a bit manipulation with n minus one. Same thing we are going to do. The same thing we are going to do to do what? To determine my index, where is my entry located? Great, so I index uh, is located now is at three. So I got three. What will I do after I get to three? I should match my entry. Again, I have to use the equals method to match my key with this. So Tom is the key over here. So I will, Tom is a string. So I'll match does Tom or the key that I have equals the key that is already stored at this node. So if you look, remember in the previous one, we talked about, this is the structure of the node, the hash code, the key, the value, and the next pointer. So over here, we are going to see our calculate the, so over here, we want to compare our key that has come in Tom versus the key that is stored over here. So does Varsha's key matches e Tom's key, like does Varsha dot equals Tom string manipulation. String comparison, which is using equals on Tom and Varsha. So Varsha and Tom are two different string objects. It is not equal. So what it will do? It has to go to the next node to check. So in this way, the traversal will happen and finally it will come to the next node and it will be matched to Tom and we will get the salary, whatever the salary of Tom is. So simply this is how the get method is going to work. That's it. So put is done, get is done. Now the question comes, what happens in case of Java 8? Now let's try to talk about what is the Java 8 implementation of HashMap which helps to improve the performance of large hash collision. So whenever collision is happening, we saw that we were using linked list to resolve it. But this is degrading the performance in case of large hash collision. What does that mean? Suppose all the, okay, suppose there's a, in the worst case scenario, all the entries are landing up at this but bucket index 3, which we were seeing earlier. And then it forms a huge long chain of linked list. So the lookup in that case will be traversing all the nodes. And we know that in case of line, in case of the traversal of linked list, we have to find the element which is at the last of the linked list, the time complexity is going to be order of n. So in worst case scenario, if that kind of a thing happens, that the collision is happening again and again, and all are ending up on the same bucket, I have to traverse the entire linked list to get the to fetch the value. So hash map is used for getting like faster lookups. That is the intention of hash map. That is why we are using an array, faster lookups. I just have to go to that index, I'll get the value from that and I'll print it. So hash maps are being used because of that only faster lookups. Now, if for lookup itself I have to do order of n traversal, hash map requires order of one lookup. The port and get should be constant. The time complexity should be constant. Now, if in worst case scenario, it so happens that all of them are landing up at the same bucket index, I have to traverse the entire linked list. And because of that, my performance will be degrading. That is why Java 8 introduced another data structure to improve this performance. So what is that? So from Java 8, whenever the bucket will have a more than a certain number of uh, elements, which is denoted by a constant called prefi threshold. Uh, probably the value for this is 8. So it will switch from linked list to a balanced tree. So from linked list, it is going to change to another data structure called the tree data structure. It will be converted to a tree. And when we convert to a tree, how does the time complexity affect? It, con it becomes order of log n. So that is an improvement in the time complexity also. So that is a significant improvement. So this will provide uh, a better performance, like we said, because trees are more efficient, uh, like searching values in trees are more efficient than linearly searching through a linked list. And of course, this is helping us to maintain good performance characteristic. So that is the thing, like uh, 
a hash map where the O1 complexity is what we require. Now, suddenly, because of the usage of linked list, and of course, because of the large hash collision, that becomes from O1 to OL. So, performance is going to take a hit. And that is why from Java 8, we're using tree. This is the threshold that we use, tree by threshold. Whenever this threshold is reached, the linked list gets converted to a tree to store the key value pairs. That's it. So, yeah, these were the questions which I wanted to talk about as part of this uh, uh, session today. We covered like a family of questions in case of HashMap. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, in the coming videos, we'll also try to bring videos about concurrent hash map, uh, synchronized map, what is the difference between both and all of that. So, thank you so much for watching.